Okay, everybody. Today, I'm going to try something a little different that I haven't seen much done of. I'm going to try to repair this shield. Because of the tapering, I don't know if you can see that, and I did do a video as, as I modified this. I think I called it repairing an SCA shield or something like that, but um, I'll put a link to it. And um, it's, God, it was nine pounds, ridiculously heavy, and now it's six, I think. And then my wider 30-inch shield that I made out of planks, that's five straight pounds, so that's all in the videos. But this, um, I think this will still hold up. It's pretty damn resilient. I mean, that's just, here's, here's a nice round three pound weight and we'll just hold it. Now I'm holding it off the ground, that's important. I'm just I mean, you can see it's getting kind of flattened down there, but you know, that's pretty heavy. I'm just smacking it on there. But I also, because I wanted to see what a rawhide edge actually does against a blade, I did take a blade to this thing too and um, cut it in a lot of places. Let's see, right here. And I just just chopped a chunk out of this thing. And it doth goeth a goodly way into the plywood, which um, isn't great, <laughs> uh, which isn't good. Normally, I think what happens with people is eventually it doesn't, I mean, they don't use live steel, obviously, right? But even with dull stuff, it eventually cuts through and you end up with destroyed rawhide and then you have to change out the rawhides, which, you know, isn't a big deal, but it's work and why not avoid it if you can. So what I think we can do with this thing is hide glue repair. Um, and I think we'll call it a shield management system, okay? We're gonna, it's not just fixing a shield, it's the shield management system. Marketing, right? So, I think that if I'd painted this with hide glue paint, then I could do a hide glue repair on it, and I wouldn't have to, if, as long as I used the colored hide glue, uh, I wouldn't have to repaint or anything. And the beauty of that is like if you are out at a Kima event or whatever and your edge gets all garfled up and destroyed, you could bring hide glue. Like, you know, let's say you're on the other side of the country or something and you don't want to do a whole rawhide tear down repair job. Because this stuff is dry, there's the black glue, you can just get it wet. And it instantly reconstitutes and starts getting sticky. So, I mean, you could even do that like in a hotel bedroom. See? It's already getting sticky. So, and the neat thing is if you do it hot, then it dries super fast. And you don't have to worry about it making a mess. You can pack it dry, whatever you want. So, I think that might be an improvement. I want to repair it because I cut all these holes in it. So partially to see if it works and partially because I don't want to send it to them like this. So I already smashed on it some in front of you guys and there's really not much you can do there with the hide glue except like maybe if it popped loose right here you know you could coat it back down and stuff. So. I happen to already have some non-colored hide glue. If you're not using a natural paint, then you'll have to coat with the glue and then recoat with the paint to get it all to match. But if you use hide glue as a paint, then you can just apply more hide glue and it'll be like, you know, nothing ever happened. So, I don't know, let's, let's just let me just really just chop the hell out of it first. So making sure the blade is way over the edge of the shield so I don't cut my own arm off. Just whack, 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 whack. All right. Very chopped up, right? Lots, lots of cutting. 
you, maybe it's hard to see, but this is definitely going down into the plywood. Let's cut up the string. Horrible mess, right? So, obviously it won't take too much longer before the whole thing starts coming apart. Not to mention that you're now losing actual wood. So let's change that. Fortunately, I happen to have a nice pot of hot hide glue right here. I made a video on how to make hide glue, which I can also put at the end of this video. So this stuff, when I worked with it, with the uh, plank shield, um, I discovered it was, well, I, I, I've made a shield out of balsa wood, so balsa wood is exceptionally weak, and um, the glue is stronger than the wood. Uh, when you try to file down the boards, the, uh, the glue makes little raised spots because the wood files down so much easier than the glue. So it's almost like if you made a shield out of solid glue, it would work better, be stronger, which is of course a silly idea. But really, that's what my, the deal is with my balsa shield, and I'm just pinning this down for a second so that it stays. That's really the deal with the balsa shield, is that it's really mostly a shield made out of glue and some fabric and and skin. So, I mean, there's like a few, a little hide, but it's really a lot of the thickness is glue. So, uh, it should be pretty strong. I'm kind of worried that it will shatter, but you know, we'll see. See that? Just pinned down really easy. And just keep dabbing this stuff on. Now, I like to see it's running because it's really hot. So, I like to, when I apply hide glue. I found it it works best. Uh, to apply it kind of cool just as it's starting to gel because then it doesn't run when it, the hotter it is it seems like the the faster it runs which is probably not a terrible surprise so more waiting See, there's a lot of exposed rawhide through the paint right now, and if this was colored stuff, it would be um, it would be making everything nice and uniform and thickening. All right, it's gonna be a bit, so I'm just gonna have to come back to you guys. No, I mean, we're done here for now. You're gonna have to go away. I'm sorry, it's just... This little exercise I just went through reminded me of a point I wanted to make about hide glue, which is if you want to permeate, say, fabric, um, high temp is good. So I turn it up to 80 Celsius. Some people say that's too high and damages the glue. I've never found that to be the case, but I've also never needed it to be higher than that. Um, and right now, I just have it set to 60. And lower temperature is better for when you want to um, use build, build up, and uh, you know layer, make it thick, you know, because trying to build up this edge with really hot glue is, was not happening. I mean, it, it will, but you got to come back, hit it, wait for it to dry, come back, hit it, wait for it to dry, over and over and over again, it'll take forever, you know, whereas at a cooler temp, It doesn't cure quite as fast, I don't think, but it um, you can put it on so much thicker. And really just layer it on there. One good way to 
get a sense of how quick the glue is going to flow as you put it on is to watch it drip off the brush as you pick it up. It changes speed dramatically. Obviously slow dripping is slow flow. Just keep dabbing it on. You can even, you know, preferentially thicken, like build extra up here. Huh. Oops. Build extra, you know, where you expect more impact and makes just this nice hard shell. I think I'm about finished here. Just keep gooping it on, gooping it on. See, there's a giant cut in it that I didn't even notice because it's practically sealed itself up. But it's still there, you know. So we'll just paint right over that. And it goes away. See, I lost track of it. I mean, it's not a small gash it's just yeah in fact it's deep it goes all the way it goes that far in if you can see it right there so that's that's a pretty good cut into the edge of the plywood which goes almost all the way up to the rawhide edge there the nice thing about this glue is you can just sort of keep rubbing it in shield just gets stronger and yeah, I didn't beat the holy bejesus out of it. I just wanted to pound on it enough so that the repair concept could be demonstrated more than I really wanted to. Let's play this thing out and bring it back. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, you see it's just practically gelat. Well, it is basically gelatinous. Let me smear it on there. Maybe it's almost, yeah, I think I might generally not. I don't like it too gelatinous. I like it to be spreadable so where it's not all chunky and nasty, but looking. But it does spread on thicker like this, so that's, that's nice. And the nice thing about it when it's colder like this is that um, it doesn't run at all. It just adheres to the surface and hangs there. I mean, it's, and it's still gonna do its job. So the great thing about my patented Viking Shield formula system is that uh, once you get enough hide glue on this thing, the hide glue gets all hacked up. Um, so less of your actual shield is getting damaged. It's just glue. And then because of the nature of hide glue, all you have to do is uh, heat it up, get it damp, like with a, you could just literally take a wet cloth and just leave it on there. It'll soften the glue, everything will mash down into the cut, and then you just take the cloth off and let it dry. Done. That's it. And you can dry the glue and take it with you anywhere. No more changing rawhide at all, really. And, and the nice thing about that is then that you can make this a giant freaking bumper because you're only going to have to do it once instead of replacing it over and over and over again and just keep it sealed and you're done. And still, 
it'll, it, I mean, you wouldn't want to get clocked in the head with that. It's, it's no joke. But yeah, so just to show you real again, right there, it's nice and solid. And then, oh yeah, so with the string, the string is really, you don't need it anymore. Once you've got, there's the piece that I, I just, section I really went to town in and cut a bunch of holes. There were parts all poking off and everything. You remember that? It's all, it's all wetted down. So anyway, when you cut the, cut through the string, it'll, you know, come loose, but you just lay it down and squish it down with the glue. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I guess that's pretty much I've beat the subject to death. Um, I'm gonna paint this guy up and make, I'm gonna paint this guy up and make it look pretty. So in a couple of days, I'm going to go to Demas, the uh, local HEMA school, which I'll tell you more about when you know, I'm there and stuff, and, or I can have Stephen tell you about it since it's his school. And Stephen and I are going to test my first plank shield, the balsa wood one, just in case you're watching this in the future after I've made others. Um, first with blunt weapons, training weapons, and then with sharp stuff, whatever you got around. And we'll see how my shield holds up. Uh, if we destroy it and then maybe well and then I'll do a repair video uh, with the hide glue if it survives intact enough. I'm very nervous because for one I'm going to be taking swipes at Stephen. He's going to be holding the shield uh, with, and I'm going to have a live blade. So that's going to be exciting. And for another, I spent a long time making that shield, and it's made out of balsa wood, and I think I might make it a little bit thicker in the front next time instead of using one thin goat hide, but it's also got a lot of hide glue covering it. Will the darn thing hold out? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, Oh yeah, and we're gonna shoot it with arrows. I, I'm, I'm hoping there there will be some arrow shooting. All right, enough blabbering. Uh, thanks so much. This was meant to be a short video. Thanks so much for tuning in, watching. I hope that you found this fascinating. Please smash the like button if you found this information useful or interesting. Give me a subscribe as I am going to continue to come up with all sorts of strange ideas like making hide glue shield paint with blackberries and rust and doing a lot of natural dyeing. Um, a lot of natural dyeing of fiber arts and who knows what the heck else really I just might come up with doing. Alright, thanks for watching!